Today's lesson is called Mouth-Watering Facts About Pizza. Day 2. Welcome everyone to our show. My name is Jeff. I'm Roger, and today we're going to continue talking about some mouth-watering facts about pizza, some trivia about pizza. Mostly we've been talking about the history of pizza, where it came from. Remember, people kind of think it began with the Roman Empire. They had uh, focaccia, which was a kind of flat bread. They later added herbs and spices to it. And then, of course, Italians added other toppings like meat and cheese. And later, when the Europeans began to take over the Americas, they brought tomatoes back to Europe, and then they put tomato sauce and pizzas. And I guess it was in Italy, in Naples, where the pizza that we know today was first developed. Indeed, that's where modern pizza came from. Or originated, yeah, focaccia. That's not really pizza. That's more of a flatbread type of food, and that started there in Rome, and that spread to Italy because it was delicious. And then tomato sauce entered the mix, and modern pizza was born. That's what we were talking about just a few seconds ago. And then that's where the phenomenon of pizza really, really got started. Yeah, modern pizza just didn't stay there in Naples. It spread the world over. Yeah, nowadays you can get pizza anywhere. But yeah, at the beginning there, after modern pizza was developed in Naples, it spread to America. And from America, it spread to the rest of the world. All right, folks, that's enough about history. Let's go ahead and dive into our lesson and learn these fun facts or some fun facts about pizza. Hungry yet? Make your mouth water with one of these common types of pizza. New York. A New York pizza slice is gigantic and triangle shaped with plenty of cheese and tomato sauce. New York is known for offering its own style of pizza at incredible prices, some for only one US dollar a slice. Sicilian. Sicilian style pizza is rectangular and the dough is more puffy than that in other kinds of pizza. It's also crunchy on the bottom after cooking and includes several toppings. 大家好,今天第一个单字我们看到的是gigantic. 这个字当作形容词代表巨大的,庞大的意思。例如, There is a gigantic trash heap on the outskirts of the city. 该市市郊有一座巨大的垃圾堆。再来,我们看到的单字是rectangular. 这个字当作形容词,它有长方形的意思。所以我们可以说, the drawings were rolled up and placed in a long rectangular box. 画作被卷起来并放进一个长方形的盒子里。Okay, everybody, it's time now to discuss the first part of our lesson. Hungry yet? Are you hungry yet? Usually when people talk about food, it makes other people really hungry. Boy, all this talk about hamburgers is making me hungry. It's like me, you know, back in high school when people talked about tacos. Boy, my mouth was watering at the thought of having some nice tacos and a Coke to go with them. But in any case here, we're asking that question, are you hungry yet? Well, make your mouth water with one of these common types of pizza. So today we're going to talk about different kinds or or different types of pizza. Remember, the title of our article is Mouth-Watering Facts About Pizza. So if something makes you hungry, if it increases your appetite, we can describe that thing as being mouth-watering. So here, your mouth is going to water. Interesting here, because the word water is actually being used as a verb. You could also say salivate, okay, which means your mouth starts to actually produce saliva because you are expecting some food to be served to you really soon. Yeah, you're anticipating some delicious food. You're anticipating its arrival, so your mouth begins to water, or you begin to salivate to prepare your mouth to start eating. Anyways, yeah, are you hungry yet? Well, if not, by the end of today's lesson, you are definitely going to be hungry because we're going to be talking about all sorts of different types of pizza. Now, let's start in New York. Let's talk about the New York style of pizza. A New York pizza slice, everyone, is gigantic and triangle-shaped with plenty of cheese 
and tomato sauce. Yeah, sometimes I see people cut pizza into like a grid formation, so the pizza pieces are usually kind of square in shape. That's not the case in New York City. Okay, in New York City, you always get a slice of pizza, and it's always triangle shaped. And another thing about these slices of pizza, in New York. They're huge. They're gigantic. Yeah, a New York slice of pizza is so big that very often people fold it when they eat it. It's just that big. Anyways, yes, the word gigantic means really big. Everyone, a New York slice of pizza is huge. It's gigantic. It's really, really large. Yes,、uh, oftentimes if you're in New York, you'll see a sign that says "Pizza by the slice."、Uh, most of the time, people order pizzas as a whole pizza. It's big and round, maybe 12 inch, 16 inches, or something like that. But maybe you're not that hungry, so you can have a slice of pizza or a piece of pizza. Pizza by the slice, and again, as we've said here, the ones in New York are huge. They are gigantic. They are very big, and they're triangular or triangle shaped. And they've got plenty of cheese, lots of cheese, and tomato sauce on them as well. You probably don't even need any toppings on them. New York is known for offering its own style of pizza at incredible prices. Here, incredible means hard to believe, but if we're talking about prices that are hard to believe, that means they're probably really, really low. At incredible prices, a great discount. A really good deal, really cheap. Some slices of pizza go for only one U.S. dollar. Wow, that's pretty cheap. A dollar a slice. That's amazing. That's only thirty, thirty-two NT. Is that the exchange right now? I'm not sure, but in any case, yes. That's、uh, dirt cheap. That is incredible. What an amazing value! You get a gigantic slice of pizza, and sometimes it only costs you one U.S. dollar. Amazing. So yeah, here the value for a slice of New York pizza, the value is great. It's incredible. This is an incredible price for one slice of really big pizza. Yeah, the value here is incredible, or it's just really, really good. In fact, I'm having a hard time believing this. It's just that incredible. Anyways, though, even though the value there in New York. Is incredible. Okay, Sicily apparently also has some fantastic pizza. And yes, next we're going to be talking about the Sicilian style of pizza. And yes, Sicilian—that's the word here. Let's go ahead and talk about it right now. Sicilian. The adjective means from Sicily or of a style that is reminiscent of Sicily. By the way, Sicily is an Italian island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Yep, it's at the tip of the boot. Of Italy, there. So yes, that's Sicily. It's also known for the mafia and the gangsters. But、uh, there's more to Sicily than that. Of course, they've got some great pizza there too. Sicilian style pizza is rectangular, which means it's in the shape of a rectangle, and the dough is more puffy than that in other kinds of pizza. So if something is puffy, it's kind of like cake. It's kind of puffed out. It's kind of big and spongy, as opposed to different kinds of pizza that is flat. Flat and crispy. There you go, focaccia and flatbread. Yeah, you're not gonna have puffy dough there. Yeah, the bread I should say that it's cooked on is flat and it's kind of crispy, okay, and kind of hard. That's not the case though with Sicilian pizza. The dough apparently is very puffy. Now here we've got the word puffy. The word puffy describes something that is soft and maybe round and kind of looks like it might be filled with a whole lot of. Air, for instance, clouds and pillows are fluffy and puffy. And you could also say that bunny rabbits, bunny rabbits have puffy tails. There you go. Now, more on the Sicilian style of pizza. It's also crunchy on the bottom after cooking, and includes. Several toppings. Now my mouth is watering. Okay, those gigantic slices in New York sounded good, but I don't know, Roger. I think that the Sicilian style pizza sounds even better. It certainly does. And now let's go back to North America. We're going to go to Chicago in the next part of our lesson. Let's find out now about deep dish style Chicago pizza. Deep dish Chicago. Deep dish or Chicago-style pizza starts with dough that's pressed into an iron dish. It gets its name from the dish it's baked in, which is usually a few inches deep. As its name implies, this style of pizza originated in Chicago. It was made famous by the aforementioned Unos. Hawaiian. Hawaiian pizza is known for one thing: pineapple. 
Sam Panopoulos, a Greek immigrant living in Canada, first put pineapples on his restaurant's pizza in 1960. The name Hawaiian was given to it for the brand of pineapple that Panopoulos used. 第二部分我们看到的单字是imply。这个字当作动词,代表含有点点点的意思,或是暗示暗指的意思。例如,他要买房子的决定似乎意味着想要结婚的渴望。英文可以这么说,His decision to buy a house seems to imply a desire to get married. 接下来我们看到的单字是originate。这个字当作动词,它有来自,起源的意思。例如, the river by our cabin originates from up in the mountains. 我们小屋旁的那条河源头来自山上。Yeah, folks, the name of the game right now is Chicago-style pizza or deep dish pizza. And Roger, I've got a confession to make right now. Yeah. I lived in Chicago for a couple of years. I had deep dish pizza. You did? I did. You should and, have, yeah. And I, and I didn't like it. Really? Yeah. It was so packed full of good stuff that it made me sick. Yeah, it's such a big pizza pie and you eat so much without knowing it that, yeah, if you're not careful, you can get sick. So, yeah, Chicago deep dish style pizza, everyone is super delicious, but be really, really careful or you might have a bad experience like I did. I filled myself so full of that delicious pizza that I gave myself a stomach ache. So, yeah, there's my confession. Deep dish pizza is great, but my experiences with it weren't all that great. Okay, yeah, I guess it's okay once in a while, but yes, if you have Chicago-style pizza, you're probably going to be consuming three or 4,000 calories in one meal, which is not good. You're going to get fat that way. So yes, maybe you can eat it on a special occasion. But uh, in any case, those are our opinions. This is deep dish or Chicago-style pizza. It starts with dough that's pressed into an iron dish. Okay, an iron dish, uh, that's how it's served, made out of this metal iron. And the dough is pressed into it, not just put in there lightly, but it's actually pressed into there with one's fingers. And it gets its name from the dish it's baked in. So that's why we call it deep dish pizza, because it's baked in a deep dish, in a deep iron dish and that deep dish is usually a few inches deep yeah two or three inches that's quite deep it's actually going to start looking like a cake or something there you go it gets its name from the dish it's baked in which is deep a few inches deep and as its name implies this style of pizza originated in Chicago. Yeah, it is Chicago-style pizza after all. And get this, it was made famous by the aforementioned Uno's. Yes, on day one, we talked about Uno's Pizzeria. It opened up there in 1943. I believe it opened up there in 1943 in Chicago. And that was when it was clear that pizza wasn't going anywhere. The pizza as a phenomenon was here to stay. Anyways, we got a lot to talk about in this sentence. So let's get started. Now, we just talked about this word aforementioned. It said that this style of pizza was made famous by the aforementioned Uno's or Uno's. Uno's Pizzeria. Now, this word aforementioned, it just means mentioned before. Yes, this word, aforementioned or aforementioned, this word is meant to bring your attention to something that was previously mentioned. And like I said before, on day one, we talked about Uno's Pizzeria. We talked about it before or we mentioned it before so we can use this word. Now, we've got two other words to talk about in this sentence. First up, we've got the verb imply. To imply something is to say something without really coming out and saying it directly, okay? To imply something is to suggest that thing, to suggest that thing, or to hint at an underlying meaning. Indeed, my Uncle Paul was always implying to us that he was much smarter than us, but he never actually came out and said it, but uh, his attitude and some of the things he said sort of implied that he thought he was superior to us. But here, the name Chicago-style pizza implies that it's from Chicago. It doesn't actually come out and say that it's from Chicago, but it certainly implies that. It gives us the strong suggestion that it originated in Chicago, and here the word to originate just means that's where it came from, that's where it got its start. All right. The next style of pizza, though, yeah, I genuinely just don't like this style of pizza, but to each his or her own. You can like 
Hawaiian pizza. If that's your thing, go ahead and enjoy it. I just don't like Hawaiian style pizza. Anyways, Hawaiian pizza is known for one thing: pineapple. Ick. Anyway, Sam Panopoulos, a Greek immigrant living in Canada, first put pineapples on his restaurant's pizza in 1960, and the name Hawaiian was given to it for the brand of pineapple that Panopoulos used. Did you hear that, Roger? This is、yes. Hawaiian-style pizza. Kind of weird, yeah. Yeah, but it didn't even originate in America. Yeah, Canada is not America, and last time I looked, Hawaii is a state. In America, further, pizza is an Italian food, but this is a Greek immigrant, a Greek immigrant living in Canada, making Hawaiian pizza. Or it wasn't even Hawaiian pizza; he just made this pizza, and he happened to call it Hawaiian because that was the brand of pineapple that he used. Roger, I'm confused here. It's kind of confusing, you know. Hawaiian pizza. The name implies that this pizza came from Hawaii, but it turns out it actually came from Canada. Those are two very opposite kinds of countries or places. Hawaii is tropical with palm trees and stuff like that. Canada is cold with snow and Eskimos and hockey players and stuff like that. So yes, you would not expect Canada to be the origin of Hawaiian pizza, but that is where it came from. Hawaiian pizza was.、Uh, From Canada because this、uh, Greek immigrant, this immigrant who immigrated from Greece to Canada, had a restaurant there, and he put pineapples on his restaurant's pizza way back in 1960. And he thought, "Gee, what am I supposed to call this pizza? Oh, here's the can where I got that pineapple. It's、uh, the Hawaiian brand, so I'll call this pizza Hawaiian pizza." The name Hawaiian was given to it for the brand of pineapple that he used. Interesting. So if you go to Hawaii and you order Hawaiian pizza, they're probably going to laugh at you. Yeah, because Hawaiian pizza isn't Hawaiian at all. Pineapples are Hawaiian, sure, but not Hawaiian pizza. It's Canadian, and yes, this particular style of pizza and pizza is an Italian food. Was actually made by a Greek person and not an Italian person. How confusing! All right, folks. With that, it is time for us to almost end our article. But before we do so, we have to take a break. But when we do come back, we'll be finishing up our article on pizza. Neapolitan. Neapolitan, also called margarita pizza, gets its name from the pizza's place of origin, Naples. It's a simple but delicious pizza made with tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, olive oil, and fresh basil. With numerous variations worldwide, pizza is one of the most enduring and universal foods we have. What kind will you get? 第三部分我们看到的单字是 variation。这个字当做名词，它有某事物的变种、变化形式或是变化、变动的意思。所以我们可以说 ，piano players can often play different variations of the same song. 弹钢琴的人常常可以从同一首歌中弹奏出不同的变化。今天最后一个单字，我们看到的是 enduring。这个字当作形容词，它有持续的、耐久的意思。例如 ，the enduring influence of the Renaissance can be seen in architecture all over the world。文艺复兴历久的影响，从世界各地的建筑物可见一斑。Okay, let's talk about another type of pizza, Neapolitan. Well, Neapolitan, also called margarita pizza, gets its name from the pizza's place of origin, Naples, which is Napoli in Italian. Again, that's another city or region of Italy. It's a simple but delicious pizza made with some simple ingredients. It's made with tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, olive oil, and fresh basil. There you go. You can't go wrong with that. That sauce, cheese, oil, basil, Neapolitan, simple, short, and sweet sounds good to me. Okay, with numerous variations worldwide, pizza is one of the most enduring and universal foods we have. What kind will you get? What are you going to order the next time you go to a 
pizzeria. Anyways, that does it for our article on pizza. But before we take a break, we've got two more vocabulary words to discuss. The first of these is the word variation. A variation is like a version of something. It's a type of something that is different from a similar thing found in some other place or at some other time. Then we also have the word enduring. Pizza is an enduring food. It has lasted for a long time. Yes, enduring means lasting or continuing or ongoing. But be careful. Pizza can be high in carbohydrates. So again, be careful if you're trying to control your weight. And that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. But we still need to hear from our Chinese teacher. Good 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看一下今天文法重点。课文第一部分有介绍到纽约的披萨。他说 ，A New York pizza slice is gigantic and triangle-shaped with plenty of cheese and tomato sauce. 纽约披萨非常大片，然后形状是三角形，上面还有许多 cheese， 还有番茄酱汁。好，句子里面有一个单字 gigantic。它是形容巨大的、庞大的意思，就跟 huge 差不多。我们顺便补充一些意思相近的形容词，也可以表达巨大的。好，第一个比较好记，就是 Titanic。Titanic， 铁达尼号，也就是指巨大的、力大无穷的。再来 ，giant。Giant， 哎，我们有一个脚踏车的牌子，捷安特，就这个字。Giant， 它当名词指巨人，那当形容词可以形容巨人的，还可以形容巨大的。好，再来，同学们应该知道 monster 这个字是怪物嘛？那我们把 monster 的形容词 monstrous 形容怪物的，它也可以用来指巨大的、庞大的。再来 ，tremendous，t r e m e n d o u s。Tremendous， 它是形容非常棒的，可是也可以用来指极大的、非常大的。再来 ，enormous，e n o r m o u s，enormous 常常用来指大小或是数量是很庞大的。还有一个字跟 enormous 意思跟用法都差不多，它是 immense，i m m e n s e，immense 也是指庞大的。另外还有两个字给同学们做参考。Gargantuan， 还有 humongous， 听起来都很奇怪。Gargantuan 拼作 G A R G A N T U A N， gargantuan， 还有 humongous， H U M O N G O U S， humongous， 也都是指非常巨大的意思。其实还有很多很多形容词，我们可能一小时都讲不完。我们先进入下一个文法重点，请同学们看到课文第二部分有介绍到芝加哥披萨，那它一个句子是。As its name implies, this style of pizza originated in Chicago. It was made famous by the aforementioned Unos. 如此名，如这个名所示，这种披萨它源自芝加哥，它是由前面提到的 Unos 而让它变得有名。句子里面的动词 originate， 它是不及物动词哦，它表达来自、起源。那常见的用法是 originate in something， 或者是 originate from something。那我们这边还补充一个类似的用法是 something has its roots in 什么什么，也可以用来表达某事物源自于什么什么。root r o o t， 它有来源、起源的意思。那它用在这个用法里，通常都是复数型。举例来说 ，the marathon has its roots in ancient Greece。马拉松起源于古希腊时期。那如果用 originate 来表达，那就说成 the marathon originated in ancient Greece。好，那以上是今天的重点整理，我们来回顾今天的单字吧。Gigantic。Whoever left the gigantic mess in the kitchen needs to clean it up now. Rectangular. Our office is located in that rectangular building across the street. Imply. It was heavily implied that she knew our secret. Originate. That ritual originates from early 1800s North America. Variation. Several variations of that song have been produced for different movies. Enduring. Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales are some of the most enduring children's stories. Discussion starter starts now. Time now for our discussion starter. Here comes the magic question: What style of pizza would you like to try? 
Mm, well, I hate Hawaiian pizza. And yeah, I had that bad experience with Chicago-style pizza. So I think I would like to try the Neapolitan-style pizza. It's really easy to make, and it's really elegant for that reason. I don't think that anyone could ever mess up a Neapolitan pizza, so I'm going to go for Neapolitan pizza. Mozzarella, sauce, some basil, some oil, and that's it. Well, I respect your opinion, but my favorite type of pizza is cheese pizza. I like things simple, just sauce and cheese, but I am also interested in trying Chicago deep dish pizza. Even though you didn't like it when you tried it, I've never tried it before and I would just like to see what all the hubbub is about. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But, as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, see you next, next time. time.